Oh my God. This is way too dope. Yeah, we all in this thing, man. We in here. Big stadium, big stadium. <laughs> In 2022, the NFL descended upon Munich for the first ever regular season game in Germany. The planning for a trip like this, we were on a plane to Munich a week after the schedule came out this year. Tom Brady and the Bucks taking on the Seahawks in Germany, the first ever game there. There was an advanced team that went over in May. That was hugely beneficial to get your eyes on all the sites, check out the stadium, check out the hotel, how far is everything from each other. We kind of filled everybody in around June and then we start the planning. Flight times, the preparation of getting the stuff over early. It's a big process to pick up an entire operation and move it 5,200 miles away. We're gonna be the first group to play in Munich. We know we're prepared to go to Germany. I don't know if Munich's ready for us in terms of logistics, supplies, and scheduling, but I feel like we're gonna be really well prepared. We in Germany, cuz. Ain't no relax. Hey, we, we in Germany, cuz. Time has just about arrived at Allianz Arena as we get set for the first regular season National Football League game in Germany. We in Germany, man. They don't get no better than this. The first decision a team must make when embarking on such an epic journey comes down to scheduling. We had three different options that we could consider. The first option would be finish your game against the Cardinals, fly out to Munich, stay there all week, do all your preparation out there. The second option would be have requested an East Coast trip prior to the Munich game, and then maybe you stay on the East Coast for the rest of the week, then you go to Munich. And then the third option would be come back to Seattle, leave from Seattle midweek. When you're kind of analyzing that, our players are used to normal recovery here. They're used to having the athletic training room. They're used to having the hydrotherapy room to try to recover from the game they just played. When you're away on trips, do you miss your own bed? <laughs> Absolutely no question. If I could take my bed anywhere, I would. We understand that in this league, it's all about consistency. You know what I mean? Great teams are built on consistency and that's how you make the longest runs. From the coaching staff, those guys are trying to game plan for the next opponent. Remote offices set up at a hotel, it just takes them out of their comfort zone. Ultimately, we decided on that third option, which is let's do everything we can here, like we're accustomed to having, then let's travel out to Munich. International travel for NFL teams requires moving a massive amount of equipment and gear. As the director of equipment, my ultimate goal is making a smooth transition from Seattle to Germany and Germany back, and outfitting everybody top to bottom. So that would be players, helmet down to shoes, coaches from the shoes up to hats, and the staff the same. So right now we're packing practice gear for Germany. This is for a Thursday walkthrough. What's up? So if there is anything special. Everything y'all give us is special, you know, it's from y'all, it's from the heart. It's just stamping in, each of them have a Seattle Seahawks and their number, just so that we can know whose is whose. Right now I'm putting tags in all the cleats. So we have scanners in all the stadiums and it picks up all the cleats as if they go in and out of the locker room. So then we're able to track how many times they've worn a specific model of cleat. So right now I'm just replacing some old cleats for some guys. You have roughly around 30 coaches. Staff, you have roughly around 75. Players, there's 70. So we have to outfit roughly around 150 people, top to bottom, depending on what they do. If they're on the field, they have to have inclement weather clothes, like a heated vest, rain jackets. We have to have everything sent over about a week before to make sure it goes seamless when they get there. What we're doing now, we're loading into the Seahawks practice facility. And what we've done, we've brought across equipment from the UK, play clock and the game clock, pop-ups, shields, step-overs, all the equipment they need. Tomorrow, we should also receive water, Gatorade, tape, all the bits and pieces that they sent directly from um, Seattle. So, most of this stuff is what we sent early on, probably back in August. So that would make it here in time. This is just kind of everything that we feel we need. Cleaning products, band-aids, all our tape. That's really, really essential for us because that's what we use to help support them in case things happen, like off the cuff during a game. When you travel international, 
You're not allowed to put uh, LED batteries underneath the plane. So everybody will carry a case on the plane. But you're only allowed to have 20 batteries in a pack per person. Heated vests are these batteries here. We'll have some DeWalt batteries here for our jugs machine, our ball machine on the field for practice and on game day. Miscellaneous coach quarterback batteries we'll have in here for that helmet as well. It's hard because the power is different. We bring a lot of converters and packs. These planes we travel on are massive. We travel probably 45 trunks, plus you have the player bags and then you got the coach's gear. Our video department has to shoot practice and, and then shoot games and all the equipment they have. We got to ship a server over there so they can watch film and download all the practice film onto the coach's iPads. Medical sides and things that you have to have to be able to rehab players. Normally when we travel during the season, we bring about 18,500 pounds. When going to Germany, we'll have about a little over 20,000 pounds. It's a little bit more. When you go international, you got a list out of value. So we're sitting pretty close to a million dollars with a product underneath the plane. That's a huge price tag, but the most impressive cargo on the plane, the elite NFL athletes themselves. You're going across nine time zones to get there. You got a 10 hour flight from the West Coast. Really, it's just an acclimation kind of thing, right? You want our guys to get over there, get acclimated. Yo, what's going on, Twills? Ryan Neal checking in for the biggest trip of the year. Got my sleep number travel pillow, got all my bags packed. Munich, Germany, we excited to see you, man. Let's turn up, let's get it. The Seahawks are embarking on an epic journey here. The, this is the furthest any NFL team would have ever traveled to play a football game and to my knowledge the furthest any of the professional sports in the United States have ever traveled to play a regular season game. This break in routine. I can't probably overstate the impact that this will have on our players. Many of these players haven't traveled overseas and traveling over an ocean and going to a foreign country like this is a really unique experience for them. Have you been to Germany before? No. <laughs> no, never. Not on that side of the world, ever. You know, our main focus is just to make sure these guys don't have to think about anything but the football game. We're trying to keep these trips as much like a regular road trip, and, and in my mind, that's kind of what the NFL wants to start looking at it as, because they're going to be more common. There's a lot of factors involved in, in traveling, most of which is the time change. The rhythm that players experience with their sleep. Circadian rhythm is your 24-hour body clock. It controls a lot of things within the systems of your body physiologically. We have to optimize that for our, our players. Well, shoot, it's the number one thing in this sport. I mean, the name of the game is how fast can you get your body back to do it again. In the long football season, you start to see at about that midway point, the physicality starts to drop a little bit. And it's just like, you have to take care of yourself to give yourself the best chance. So I got to put in the most work on recovery and that's sleep and that's the acupuncture and that's the tugs and that's massages the trainer room. Make sure it's fine tuned and ready to go so I can give myself the best shot on Sunday. Bowles intercepted, Ryan Neal with the pick. The Seahawks on defense. So in anticipation of travel, Teams can adjust their sleep cycles. And this here is a perfect opportunity for utilizing the data that the sleep number bed can give the athlete. If in advance they begin to shift their sleep in anticipation of their travel, the feedback that they get on the data from their sleep number bed and using at their sleep IQ score can help inform them how successful they are as a team in advanced preparation. Road trips for all NFL teams are challenging. The challenges increase proportionally by distance. With that comes things like travel fatigue, significant impact on sleep disruption, nutrition, diet, etc. The amount of people we got traveling on the team plane is about 165 people. There's 44 first class, like lay flat seats, so all of our players will be in those. And for those that aren't, you know, some of the younger guys, they will have like a full row to themselves in the back. When they arrive, their body is going to still want to be in Seattle time and will have to adapt to the daylight when they arrive if they fly overnight in Germany and have light exposure now and have to change their diet and have to change their exercise routine uh, and have to do this in a short period of time. On the plane, there will be an effort to get the lights turned out pretty quickly. We're gonna to try to encourage these guys to get as much sleep as possible, try to log as many hours as they can, and then when they wake up, we want them to start feeling like, yeah, it's, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Start telling your body it, it is. One of my concerns is that you're on a long flight. Typically, we do have them hydrate a lot on a plane, but since we do want them to sleep for a lot of the flight, we don't want them drinking a lot of water, and then when they wake up again, we'll push hydration. When the players land in Germany, it'll be midday, but their bodies will be telling them it's 3 a.m. Seattle time. We're really out here in Germany. 
I don't know how to feel right now. I'm on a whole different part of the world. It's truly amazing. They're going to be tired when we arrive. We know that. That's why it's like really crucial that we get them moving. Let's get the energy kind of turned up a little bit. Let's get out and practice. We got to expose them to as much light as we can that day so we can start the process of getting their body clocks switched over. Today's arrival day, okay? They flew into Munich Airport. The, the customs process went really well. They were in and out of the airport within like 35 minutes. Went straight to the hotel, got changed, got some food and came straight out to practice. Now, thankfully, when they got here, everything they had requested was in place. Great conditions, what more can they ask for? And the vibe was really good. Music was blaring, energy was there. It was a great practice for them. Here's my man right here, Coach. Y'all know Coach, my man. Get a, get a picture with you in the group. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I would love right, to here. Right, here. right here. Coach Carroll, he wants to kind of keep the same routine for the guys. So come Friday, we want to be kind of in our regular Friday mode. Today is their normal Friday prep. We're installing red zone and do our normal practice routine. And then they'll have this afternoon off, just like they do at home. And then tomorrow, Saturday, is our review Saturday, just like we do on, on all our road trips. So at this point, the big adjustment day, it has already happened. So now it's just, you know, try to make everything as normal as possible leading up to game time. There's time shifters, the things that you do in your environment on an everyday basis that you connect to physiologically and psychologically that give you cues as to what part of the day it is. Light is a time shifter. As soon as we're exposed to light, we get a sense for what day it is and what time it is. But there's also the environmental cues like music, social cues, food, eating. Our big goal is really that it's as familiar as possible for the team. We're trying to work with some food products, things that naturally have melatonin so it helps them in the evening fall asleep and then the biggest thing in the morning is getting them up, getting that light again and also introducing caffeine. If they're not a regular caffeine user and they don't react well to caffeine, you're not encouraging that because you don't want them to have a negative reaction to caffeine. There's a lot of things that we normally would take with us on a travel trip that we can't because of customs or because of regulations with imports and exports. So We've actually had to try to source direct from a lot of companies to get that into Germany. For example, dairy is something that we can't import into Germany, so we've sourced a local protein shake that we can use. We've actually reached out to a local juicery there and they're going to procure kind of like all the same juices that we would offer at an away game here. We have actually really great chefs here and we spent a good two hour phone call going through all of our menus with them. We got some laughs out of them when we told them that we have breakfast sausages here. They didn't even know what that was and that you can put apple and sausage. They're like, you know that we're the country that is known for sausages. So there's there's been some interesting conversations we've had. We've sent them a recipe for ranch dressing, so <laughs> I'm sure we can make that happen. We do have one player from Germany, so I'm sure he'll really want to push for some good German food. Shout out to Germany, go Hawks. I think we've done a good job as a staff and a team, literally giving them some time to explore on a few of the days so that they can try some of the foods. I want to make it with more people. I want to talk to them. We incorporated some downtime so they can experience that German culture. With new cities come new job sites and another important landmark for players to get acquainted with, Allianz Arena. Tomorrow, after walkthrough, we will visit the stadium. So it won't be the first time on Sunday that they will see the stadium in the locker room. What's up, everybody? We on the bus on the way to the, the way to the stadium to go check it out. We just got done with the walkthrough. About to see, about to see, we about to do this thing, at, man. Let's get it. We do that intentionally so they know where their locker room is. They've seen the stadium, how big it is. They've taken the drive there, so it won't be that shock factor. Oh my God. This is way too dope. All taping that they need, any soft tissue work, anything like that. Uh, anything they could need, fingernail clippers, scissors, uh, analgesic lotions and creams. Wound care needs are over here. Different sleeves and braces. All the same stuff we'd take to a road game. It is a smaller configuration. It's meant for a soccer team that has less people. Well, there's challenges. Let's just use Gabe Jackson, who's 350 pounds, who's 6'5", walking down a hall. And the hall is really built for probably two people, about 150, 175. And Gabe fills the whole hall. There's 25 lockers on one side that I saw, and probably 30, 35 on the other. There'll be enough for everybody who's active to have a locker. The offense and defense will be separated. When I was there before, I think they had about 12 shower heads. And then there's a stairwell that goes up, and it'll have a hot tub at the top. So it's a unique situation. Then the playing surface itself, 
nobody's played on this field, right? It's never been used for a football game. Our guys are different than soccer players. They're, they are bigger, they are faster, they are stronger. Checking your footing, right? That's gonna be a big thing. These guys get a feel for the, the natural grass that they have there. So really deciding, you know, footwear, what they're gonna be wearing. When you start putting that force and impact down on the field, the field's important. And you really don't get a chance to really run fully on it until game day. I think those challenges you have, the league's done an unbelievable job of trying to make the facilities better. The other big adjustment that athletes have to go through when they travel is going to sleep in an environment that's not their usual sleep environment. I encourage, and many athletes do this, they bring a pillow or a particular comforter or blanket that they like to sleep with. So as much as they can mimic their home environment, this is one more element too to help promote good sleep. Well, the hardest thing to do is if you sleep on a plane, it's hard to sleep when you get to the place you're going. You know what I mean? We're already behind and stuff like that. So when we're traveling away from here, it's staying up. You know what I mean? Like stay up so that way I can land and then I can already kind of kick my body on that time zone. Coming back, it's a little bit different. You can kind of get your sleep in, whatever the case may be, because we're going to be getting back late anyway. One thing that's very important, just as if they were home, that is to minimize the distractions before sleep. We call this sleep hygiene. You can't have a phone near the bed. And then if it is near my bed, it's in do not disturb. I can't hear it. If you call me, I'm, I'm not going to hear it. Like it's just, <laughs> I won't hear anything. So as long as that thing's off and it's not flashing, I'm all good to go. Even like I have a TV in my room, but I make myself watch TV in the living room. Like I don't watch it in the bed because it's another thing. Like I want my body to know like when I'm in the bed, it's time to sleep. Like it's not in the bed and we chilling. It's in the bed. We're going to sleep right now. Challenge two will be is how will we feel Sunday morning at kickoff? It's going to feel like 630 in the morning, which is going to be a kind of a unique experience. These early games, you know, you got to wake up. Like, you know what I mean? When it's time to get up, we're rolling. So like the night before, you know it's an early game. You gotta get your sleep, you know what I mean? Like there's no hanging around, you know, even, you know, being on the phone, talking all night. It's like, no, I have to, I have to get to bed because once the morning kicks off, we're getting into it. And so it just led to, you know, us making it routine. Even since I've been here in 19, it was a constant thing. Like we traveled a lot in 2019. And so the whole wake up factor was mad important. And so it's just like understanding the time frame and what's going on. It's really helped us out, and since we've been through that routine a couple of times, it's just kind of set in stone now. Don't take anything for granted, because it happened today doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, okay? Make sure they get um, where they need to get to, make sure that the, the crew we have in the stadium are ready to receive the team. Make sure that everyone knows what time the buses are leaving the, the hotel to arrive to the stadium to make sure that one, security is with them. Yes, they have police escorts, and once when they get to the stadium, there's no delay. They're able to get off the bus, get into the locker room and prepare because the, as much as it's Munich, it's a regular game, right? It's a business trip. It's a nice, it's a great city, but it's a business trip for the team. It's been fun. Munich, y'all been great. We're looking forward to the energy that's about to be brought to this game today. The buses are ready to rock and roll. And so are we. Let's hear it, Munich, man. Bring that energy, bring that, bring that love, because we ready to rock and roll. Lead our team, man, lead our team. Came all the way to Germany to have some fun. <laughs> Gino steps up, looks to the far side. Now he throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. A slot right. Throw down the middle. It's intercepted. Cody Martin with the pick. On fourth down and one, the play fake. Gino rolls left. Looks. Going to throw to the back of the end zone. Reaching up, making a catch. Good one. He's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks. After the game, like we would at any game here in the States, we're gonna head straight to the airport, and we're gonna get on the plane, and we're gonna fly home. The Bucks get to leave a little bit before us. What is unique about this is that both teams are going to the airport after the game. Typically, it's just one of you, right? So they get to go a little bit in advance of us. Being the home team, we gotta wait about 30 minutes, and then, then we'll go. Coming off of the trip, everyone's gonna need a couple days to get themselves sorted out. We have a bye week. We're not gonna plan necessarily to do anything special on the back end because the coaches will give them the week off to kind of go home and clear their minds and get some rest and get back on track. There's definitely more to do when it comes to a game like this and the information that's being discussed. And I think it starts with the top down. There's great synergy with this team and this club and this organization. They completely trust our instincts, our judgments, our preparation, and they know that we're gonna to put together a good trip. The ultimate goal is really to make this feel like a normal week in a normal game on the road. There'd be nothing better than once the trip's all over, 
if the feedback we get from the players and coaches is, man, that trip just felt like a normal road trip. 5,283 miles from the Pacific Northwest all the way to Munich, Germany. Everything went seamless and, and smooth, and that's, that's all we can ask for from an operational standpoint.